I'm done assuming, and I'm just coming straight to the source. Men, to my men, are y'all done being providers? My comrades, I see you struggling to understand her question, and trust me, your grace totally understands your confusion. Well, this question can only be absorbed by a two-testicle-having man if it comes from the depths of a kitchen. You see, only with the scent of stewed meats, jasmine rice, and the reverb of porcelain towel can our brains comprehend such modern girl pig Latin, a woman asking us if we will provide while not actively cooking a seven-course meal and rubbing our left gonad causes a glitch in our brain, a sort of syntax error. In this realm of woman babble, our senses like sight and hearing will not aid us. Trust only the text of your Cobra Rosetta Stone if you have the will to survive this interaction. Y'all does not have that desire inside of you anymore. Desire inside of you. As she speaks, is an American man that prided himself on being cheap his whole life. Somewhere in Porta Plata, he sits at the edge of his hotel bed next to a gorgeous, submissive woman from the rough streets of Sasua. There, in a pool of sweat, he whispers to himself, I'm going to give this woman the world. And just like that, a provider is manifested into existence. How could his desires change so drastically in just a few hours? <laughs> Like, as a woman, and I feel like we all know that men and women chemically are made different. We think different. We move different in different ways, right? But as a woman, I still have a desire to, like, in my home, be nurturing, comforting to my family, to my men. Like, I have those innate desires there inside of me. I want, like, I feel them surging. A woman that comes on the internet and says she wants to take care of the home, be nurturing and comforting to her man. What would we call her today? We'd call her a pick-me. Now I know you're about to ask men if they still consider themselves as provider men, which is fair. Well, let me ask you this. Will you admit in front of an audience of the bitter sisterhood that you are a pick-me? <laughs> I bet not. not, not. <laughs> As men, do y'all just not want to be providers anymore? Do y'all not feel that need to be like the hunter, the supplier? Do y'all not feel like that need? Like y'all have a desire to be like the strongest man in the room, right? Like do y'all still have that? She's not even two minutes into her rant, yet she attempts to emasculate you. Some of you are living with a woman that passive-aggressively taunts you like this every day, and you wonder why you hate being around her. <laughs> no woman that you provide for to talk to you in this way, especially one that we have to weigh using a tuna skill. <laughs> the nerve of this street slug. Providing for her would cost the same as feeding a wild tiger, and you might lose one of your arms feeding her, like one of Joe Exotic's cat handlers. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. With the nerve of these women. <laughs> Why is there a lack of this now? Like, what is happening? Why do men no longer seem to want to be providers? And I'm not talking about to women that don't deserve it. I'm talking about to, like, women who definitely are good women and, like, the women that you want. The women that you want, why do you not want to be a provider? Do y'all still want to be providers? Do y'all still want to be that? Because I see such a lack of it all around me. It's such a rare thing to find. So I'm just curious to know from the horse's mouth what's going on. Let me know. I don't need no man. I don't need no man. A few moments later. No, no. Get down from here, girl. I told you. Get 
get down. Get down. Show them. Do you want it? It's too salty. Referring to the men that are paying these bills for all these women. So, of course, the least they can get is probably some coochie, right? Who are these men paying all the bills? I ain't never met one of those. And in your comment section, I know I'm not crazy. That's not real life. I, I'm, I'm talking about real life, real proximity, streets over, that's on dating apps, in the real world, people. And if we're really talking about men, they, they ain't got enough to pay all our bills. Like, real, I'm being real and I mean this with all due respect. I was married. I'm divorced. I paid the majority of my bills when I was with my ex-husband, right? Just say it. I recently went on a date. I'm very proud of myself for going on that date, but I found out afterwards, after we had like come to the close of that date, that person didn't have a car. I got a car. They Ubered there. Like, I've had people try to talk to me that are still living with their baby mothers. You feel what I'm saying? Like, who are these men specifically that are paying all these bills so we should be throwing the coochie at them? I hope you're noticing the goalposts slowly moving in our direction. Just like Monday Night Football, every yard counts. Just a few years ago, the talk was about not settling for a man that could not buy her Birkin bags. She basically wanted a 6'3", part-time drug kingpin that was sensitive at home. Now they're arguing about a man that could pay the household expenses. <laughs> so it's clear that if we follow the manifesto of Lord Destro, they will only be asking us to fund their T-Mobile bills a few years from now. <laughs> They clearly see that the coochie price has dropped significantly. Not even the Fed can save us from the sudden coochie price drop. <laughs> because I tell you right now, if there were these men that were probably doing that, they would probably get thrown all of the But that's not real life. I'm talking about real life. Let's meet each other and go on dates. That's not a real thing anymore. And if we're being honest, if you ain't got no money, you should not be dating. Like, let's be real. Going on dates, courting someone costs money. No matter how you spend it. You should not be dating if you can't afford it. And I mean ice cream dates, picnic dates. I mean, if you gotta pay for parking just to go to the park. I mean the little things, filling up her gas tank, um, maybe some perfume or flowers or little things. No one's talking even about big expenses, like as far as like rent, car payments, but you need to have some money, especially if you want to date, let alone get some coach. I just don't like when people spend my words and act like the bare minimum because it is bare minimum that most of us are asking for is like so far-fetched because it's not. So I'm gonna state this again. Why does dating not exist anymore? It doesn't because y'all don't wanna put in the energy and effort and some of y'all think y'all entitled to certain things, especially our bodies just because you take us on a date. That's not how this works. It's just not. And I need you to know before you took her or him out on a date, they were paying their own bills. They were getting around. They were doing all of the things before they met you. So if they want to go out with you, if they want to date you, they probably want a partner, a companion, a best friend, someone really that's down for them. It's not about the money. I hate this generation so much. Ah. But wait a minute. You didn't smash the bell and press the like button. Blast, 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 blast. And although you will never be worthy of a monarch such as myself, Lord Destro would suggest that you poor fools at least give Oligarchy a try. So we, Lord Destro, has spoken.